Final question. I said she did well staying for 8.30. So it's, it's, um, it's the mother that does everything for them. You say push them to another coach. Is there a way out there? It could be a great kid, you know? Yeah. Potentially. Yeah. <coughs> Can you help that kid? What can you do? For, so, just to clarify, so the ones coming and answering all the questions, yeah. um, that's a decision that I've made. That's a decision that I've made just from experience. It's my recruiting screening tool. That, that if we're, we're in just a very relaxed first meeting situation and already the child is not allowed or doesn't feel capable of expressing their own opinion, then when it starts becoming important, like around selection, like around training decisions. My, my experience is it's going to get worse. It's just going to be a constant <coughs> pain in my backside and I just, I'm just not prepared to deal with it. And I'm lucky that on the Gold Coast I have a clear conscience because the best swimming program in Australia is five minutes down the road the best. So if they go there, I have a clear conscience they're with outstanding coaches and a great program. So they don't need me anyway. What I'm looking for is an environment where the people who are with me are all with me and we're all part of a similar philosophy. So I'm not saying they're not without help, but it's just that I don't want to take it on myself because it's just too difficult. That's my, but other coaches would say, it doesn't matter. I'll ban mum and dad from the pool and I'll just work with the kid. But I don't think that's the way to go. I don't feel that. I, one of the policies I know you guys have got here is not allowing parents to scream out from the sideline. That's, den that's denying parents one of the greatest joys in their life is supporting their children. Not only that, if, if I'm a rat bear, you, I'm just going, I want to kill them, I want to kill them. And they're likely to belt someone on the way home. So, but everyone's got to make the decision on where they are. But I'm, I'm not saying the kid's hopeless. But it's just I choose, I choose not to take on that type of, um, that type of, environment that type of we call them heavily invested parents <laughs> i try not to take on overly invested parents because i've just found in a lot of cases this has been far too difficult to deal with and the uh yeah let's just look at that it was a, a good question but yeah they're not they're not hopeless but it's i just i don't want to be the one to try and fix that it's too hard too difficult they've got to sort it out themselves i had a, had a mum the other week I'll tell you a true story kids in the pool and we've had some ongoing issues and what she does is she waits till I'm down the far end of the pool, comes across and has a crack at him. If he's not trying hard enough, kid is eight. So I come back, we've had lots of talks. I'd like to bounce her actually out of the program. But there's a couple of reasons why I can't, a couple of political reasons. But, um, and when I go away, and in the end, I just said, I want you two, the swimmer and mum, I would like you two to get out of the pool area and resolve your family issues. And when you two, can work together, please come back, you're welcome. Because it was intimidating the other kids. She was at the pool and she was yelling at this eight-year-old in front of all the other eight and nine-year-olds. Embarrassing for her, embarrassing for the kid, disruptive in the training environment. Right, so I probably should have screened her a long time ago, but I didn't have a lot of choice in this particular situation. All right, so let's make that last question so I'm aware of the hour. Is there any more sushi outside? To finish off, I can't imagine it's because it's so good. It may be. It may be. <laughs> no so, guys, look, I'd like to, um, I would like to wrap up. I'd like to say thank you very much to um, Sport Boat Plenty. To Tom, Tom, did you want to get up and talk about mental toughness now? Not mental toughness, no. No. Um, and to Dave, who are doing a fabulous job, and the team here are doing it. This is the end of the two week tour. I go back to Auckland, I'll go back to Australia tomorrow. So a quick word to the parents, uh, parents love your children, that's the most important lesson that I can ever give you. There'll be days when you're tired, when you're feeling flat, fatigued, there'll be days when you're feeling stressed, but the love you feel for your children is something that they might search their whole life for. My wonderful father hasn't been here for 10 years, I miss him every day, said, mate, if you find one person, one person other than me in your life that loves you as unconditionally as I do, you'll be a lucky man. If you find two people in your life that love you and accept you for who you are unconditionally, you'll be the wealthiest man on the planet. So parents, love and accept and support your kids unconditionally for nothing more than they are your kids. Any athletes in the room? Guys, enjoy sport. Have a great time. Just do it because you love to do it. 
and at the time when it's right for you, and when you know that it's right, and you decide to make a commitment to be the best you can be, give it everything. Doesn't matter what people say, the <coughs> obstacles you face, the difficulties you have to endure, never ever give up on it. If it's what you're passionate about, it's what you like, love to do, athletes, never, never back down, never give up on it. Don't let a disappointment break you. Just go and try and give it everything you've got. And my coaching colleagues, I ask you to do this at the end of every day. At the end of every day, apply the same standards to yourself as you apply to your athletes. At the end of every day when you get in the car to drive home and you're thinking about training or you're starting to switch off, just before you do, ask yourself these three questions as coaches. One, did I coach at my best today? So when you're thinking on the way home, the kids weren't quite there today, the session didn't quite work, it didn't quite work out the way that I'd hoped, it's your fault. Did I coach at my best today? Did I give them everything that I was capable of giving as a coach because that's what I've asked of them? Second question, coaches, to ask yourself at the end of every day. Did my coaching make a difference? Did I, by connecting emotionally with the hearts and minds of my athletes, did I inspire a change? Did I make a difference in a young life today? If not, why not? Because that's what we ask of them, isn't it? We say to an athlete, come to your training session, and as a result, get better. As a result, improve and change. And the third question, and perhaps the most important, ask yourselves as coaches. What did I learn today that will make me a better coach tomorrow? I meet a lot of experienced coaches. A coach will come up and say, yeah, I've been coaching for 20 years. A lot of the time is... They've been doing it for 20 years, but they've really had one year of experience 20 times over because they just keep doing the same old stuff over and over and over and can't understand why the kids are not getting better. <clears throat> Apply the same standard to yourselves, coaches, as you expect from your athletes. Did I, did I, taking ownership and responsibility for my coaching, did I learn something today that will make me a better coach tomorrow? Thank you.